So today I am hand painting a herringbone pattern. I'm nervous for me too. There are a ton of ways to do this project. I'm gonna try an easier method that will still, hopefully, possibly, fingers crossed, look good. But first, let me introduce you to the saddest room you've ever seen. Oh, this is gonna be what I call a slash room. You know that room? The room that's a office slash guest slash get ready slash dog timeout room. Sit there and think about what you chewed up. This is why we can't have nice things. Now it's time to make your stencil. Ish. There are official herringbone stencils out there, but one day shipping doesn't do you very good when tackling this project was a same day decision. So you're gonna take a piece of cardboard about seven to eight inches wide. Then you're gonna take a ruler to find and mark center point. From there you're gonna choose and then mark your design desired angle. So this ended up being just shy of two inches, so I'm gonna emulate that on the other side. And then of course the next step is to cut on the lines, which would be very dangerous while I'm filming myself, so just trust that's what I'm about to do. This is totally optional, but I put a little stick on level because I'm not great with lines. You should see me putting on eyeliner. It's less like a wing and more like a branch. Prep your space with drop cloth and painter's tape if you wanna be on the cautious side. It's time to take the paint color of your choice. I chose a color from another room because I had it it's free and it's a light color, which feels more forgiving. Now you'll see I'm using a pretty thin brush, but I've seen DIYers use everything from a two inch brush to a sponge to a paint marker. All right, before your brush hits the wall, I'd recommend doing a few test runs. And this right here is why you practice first. It's gonna go great. I'm using tape to mark the center of the herringbone pattern, and then also to hold me accountable to even spacing. So I did four inches from the left for the first piece and then eight inches thereafter. This is to help it look like you didn't give a kindergarten or a paintbrush and say, go have fun. Not even on my second line and I already screwed it up. So I have some wet cloth on standby. So I quickly learned that the stencil is not necessary for the entire way down. I really liked it for the beginning of the column to make sure that I'm hitting my angles and that it's straight as a starting point. But from there, I just looked at the marks around it to make sure that they were cohesive. It's not about being perfect. There are going to be different depths of color, different widths, different lengths, every once in a while it's gonna veer to the right, and then you just course correct. The tape up top was helpful for approximate spacing, and definitely don't put too much paint on your brush or it gets messy really fast, especially with that stencil because it will drip onto the cardboard and then onto the wall. Definitely have a wet cloth nearby just in case. One thing that really surprised me is how little paint I used. I didn't have to refill even once. Also, at the end, if you had any smudges, no big deal, just grab a Q-tip and your base color paint and touch it up. You guys, I'm very pleasantly surprised and super happy with the way it turned out. It's not perfect, but it feels perfectly imperfect. And like at least a third grader painted it, maybe even fourth.